Hey, this is Zach with MusclesAndVeggies.com. Today I wanted to come at you with a quick tip on bacterial overgrowth. Uh, small intestine bacterial overgrowth. What is that? Yeah, well, it's just what it sounds like. It is the bacteria that's in your large intestine has migrated up into your small intestine and that causes gas and bloating. So if you, if you struggle with gas and bloating, you could have a bacterial or yeast overgrowth. Now, what is the best dietary approach for bacterial overgrowth? Uh, it's a common question that I get, and I wanted to give you my thoughts, kind of controversial. However, most people will say that you have to go on a low carbohydrate diet, uh, eat lots of fiber rich vegetables. Um, some other people will say it's a low FODMAP diet, um, and you can look up what that is. Some people will say that you have to go carnivore and things like that. Um, what I want to pose to you is the issue of fiber. So we have this thing called prebiotic fiber. And what is that? Fiber is what actually feeds bacteria because we can't digest fiber. So fiber can only be broke down by the bacteria that's in our gut. And there's such thing as soluble and insoluble fiber. Insoluble fiber is very dense fibrous like kale and celery and that's insoluble fiber. Uh, then we have soluble fiber and this could be from grains, this could be from like things like brown rice or um, you know buckwheat, quinoa, millet, uh, any of your non-gluten grains, things like that. And why am I talking about this? Well because fiber is what feeds bacteria. So let's just pose the question that if we decrease fiber in our diet, we will not be providing food for the bacteria that have migrated up into the small intestine. So A, if we don't uh, give them fiber to eat, they don't have any food. B, if we uh, eat easily digestible, easily absorbable things, things that are absorbed in the stomach or the duodenum and don't even make it as far as the large intestine, then we're really starving these bugs. Now, doing this 100% of the time may be a little difficult. However, uh, a low fiber diet just temporarily can decrease microbial diversity very, very well. Um, so what does that look like? Well, juicing, stripping all the fiber out, but having fruits and vegetables, primarily vegetables, uh, in their juiced form, still gives you the minerals, the antioxidants, the polyphenols, uh, those vitamins, all that good stuff, but it strips the fiber out of it, right? So juicing is an excellent way. Um, speaking of whey, whey protein isolate, if you can tolerate that, uh, it's an excellent way to get in a juicing smoothie that you can have very fiberless uh, smoothie. Uh, another one is rice. Rice and rice noodles are an excellent way to get in carbohydrate sources without ever making the glucose turns into or the starch turns into glucose and never makes it to the large intestine to feed more bacterial growth. And that's what that's what that bloating and gas is. When bacteria eat, uh, when they feed, they produce hydrogen or methane gas, and that is the bloat or the gas that we get is from bacteria eating. So if you notice that you eat things like rice, you're juicing your fruits and vegetables, you're eating lots of fruits that are low in fiber, berries, things like that, and you notice, man, I'm not gas and bloated at all, I'm light on my feet, my stomach is flat, that's a really good indication that you are not um, fermenting and you're not feeding those bacteria. So give it a test run. Uh, do a lot of the, the low fiber side of things just for a couple weeks and see if your bloating and gas really diminishes. And I want you to do this one other thing. I want you to implement a carrot salad into your routine. Now a carrot salad, carrots are naturally antifungal and antibacterial. There's lots of microbes and fungus and yeast in the soils, but carrots have a natural antifungal antibacterial property. So shred a carrot with a shredder uh, like you would de-skin it, but just do the whole thing into a big pile. And that's what you're going to make your salad out of. You're going to add three other antibacterial ingredients to that salad that are actually pretty tasty. One is salt. You're going to uh, put salt on the finished product of this salad. 
Number two is coconut oil. Coconut oil is long standing, been known for its antibacterial, antifungal properties because of the lauric acid content that's in coconut oil. So a tablespoon of coconut oil on that pile of carrot, that shredded carrot, sprinkle some salt, and then the last ingredient you're gonna add is a half a lime. Just like we put that lime on our guacamole, why? Not just for taste, but also to keep the, the avocado from browning. And why does it brown? Because of the bacteria that are feeding off the prebiotic fiber on that avocado or is turning it brown. We squeeze that lime on top of the carrot salad to add those antimicrobial uh, benefits. And it actually is pretty fruity because of the, the coconut oil and the lime and that hint of salt. Uh, it's a really potent way to get in some nutrients, get in some healthy fats, but also to decrease overall microbial load. And if you don't wanna use coconut oil, olive oil is also somewhat antibacterial, antifungal. So you can replace the coconut oil with olive oil if you don't do well on coconut. Um, so these are my two quick tips. Try it for two weeks, low fiber, uh, cut out and even the healthy vegetables that are full of fiber, ex them just for a couple weeks and, and just see if you notice a lot flatter of a tummy, less gas and bloating. Because if you do, you are one that could benefit from a temporary low fiber diet uh, until we get that overall load of, of microbial community to diminish and decrease to where you can add back in fiber rich foods and they don't gas and bloat you. That's the point is we can get back to a balanced way of eating and not follow these super restrictive fad diets. So that's your tip for today, Zach with Muscles and Veggies. If you're struggling with SIBO and you want more help uh, and you want one-on-one -on -one coaching, feel free to comment below or reach out to me through an email, musclesandveggies at gmail.com. Tons of videos on my website as well. You can learn more about this. Uh, but I hope this tip serves you well. Hope you have a wonderful day, Zach with Muscles and Veggies. Ouch.